Yet another round of protest against the military rulers. Frustrated citizens who voted in a series of elections still remain subject to the authority of the Supreme Council of Armed Forces, SCAF. Even the new president will be able to act only in consultation with the generals. Yet the military council is adamant it's been the guardian of the democratic process since the revolution. Insisting its legitimacy stems from the popular approval of constitutional changes in last year's referendum. 77.7% of the people said yes, which means that the people approve of the procedures being taken by the ruling military council. There has been some civilian support for continuing military rule in small but well-organized counter-demonstrations. And most importantly, the Supreme Constitutional Court has repeatedly endorsed SCAF's authority. It was this court that legitimized the constitutional declaration made by the generals in the wake of the referendum. Recognizing the document as a de facto constitution, despite the fact that only 11 of its 62 articles had been approved in the referendum. It was a decision of the court that effectively led to the dissolution of Parliament, and the judges then remained silent when SCAF took back all legislative power that had been wielded by Parliament in yet another series of constitutional amendments. And almost buried among these amendments is one that could provoke yet another national crisis, it states that the new president must take his oath in front of the very court that endorsed the military's decision to limit his powers. And in so doing, the president would explicitly accept every constitutional power that the military has assumed. The popular anger at the Supreme Council of Armed Forces may be somewhat misdirected because the ultimate legal source of power is not SCAF's 20 generals, it's the 20 judges of the country's constitutional court.